All right, you can turn in your King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30. We're going to be talking today about God's plan for real and fake Jews. There are some real Jews in this uh, world right now. Why? Because the Bible said that they'd be there in the end times. Um, and there are some fake ones as well. And God hates the fake ones. I'll show you the scripture for it. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 through 24. I'm going to read the whole chapter. It's very important. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Quickest way to destroy any one of these heretic, oh, I'm Torah observant, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Why aren't you in your land? Okay, and by the way, let me give you a little prophecy. I'm going to prophesy something and it will come to pass 100% sure. There are too many Jews here in America. The Jews came here to America because white Protestants, like myself, said we'll protect you. But you know what? There's a lot of Catholics here now and God is going to use the Catholics to drive the Jews back to Israel, just like he did with Nazi Germany. It's coming here, alt-right Nazism is coming here to America. There's going to be a second Holocaust. It's going to happen, probably very soon, within the next couple of years. Mark my words, the Jews are going to be pushed out of this land. Why? Because Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3 said so. Verse 4, and these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Coming soon. The starvation and everything that's going to happen in this country. Um, there's too many Catholics to the Jewish people out there. I can't protect you anymore. I'm a Protestant preacher in terms of I'm, a, I'm not part of the Protestant Reformation, but I'm saying I protest the abuses of Rome. So I identify with that as far as being Protestant, but I'm not a, a Methodist or a Lutheran or whatever else. Um, I would just be called a heretic, a fringe movement. Okay, <laughs> I'm not an official denominational guy or whatever else. Uh, my ancestors would have been called Anabaptist. Um, that's who the, the Denlinger family was. They, we were Anabaptists. We came here, early white separatists that helped to settle this nation. We provided the safety for you, but now there's too many Catholics. I can't protect you anymore. And I don't have enough power or wealth or anything else like my ancestors one, at one point in time would have had. But with all the Catholic scheming that's gone on in, in America in the last you know, 200 years or so, um, I'm, I'm powerless now. I can't help you. You better leave. You better get back to Israel. And I'm serious. Verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. God has a plan for you, if you're a part of Israel, physical descendant. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. That will be after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, um, When Jesus Christ comes back, and yes, Jesus is your Messiah, you blew it there. But Jesus Christ, when he comes back, and you'll be convinced of it. Again, I don't even have to worry about, if you're Jewish and you're watching this, and you're saying, oh, I reject Jesus. Oh, you won't in the future. You won't. But um, what he's going to set up on this earth is going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. And it's not going to be Catholic. Okay, If you're Jewish, don't you dare think for one second that the Catholics are Christians. They are not. They are not. The Bible, the New Testament condemns them as mystery Babylon. Verse 11. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, including America, Yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is uncurable, and thy wound is grievous. 
There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Israel is a very wicked nation right now. And the Jews, the socialist, communist Jews of this country here in America, they're wicked as well. They're in, involved in all kinds of sins. And, and, oh, then that proves that they're not really the Jews. Can you read plain English? That's what's supposed to happen in the end times. It's what the Lord said would happen. Verse 15, Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. The Lord is going to be punish them badly because of the sins that they have increased. And again, if you're one of these uh, posty, toasty, nut job, Hebrew roots things, is this verse directed towards you? Walk around saying Yeshua HaMashiach and all this other stuff. And I, I'm going to have Shabbat this this week, at our holy Shabbat. And, and, uh, and this is what God thinks of you? You're putting yourself in a situation where God's saying, hey, I'm going to punish you. And destroy you. Brilliant. Verse 16. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries every one of them. Shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I, for I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. Saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast saying. This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few, I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he is, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that en engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it. And until he have performed the intents of his heart, in the latter days ye shall consider it. Yes. A Jew is going to look at what's happening and they will consider it. And all of a sudden that New Testament that you've rejected, the Jews out there are really going to come out and they're going to say, I need to get a copy of that book. I need to know what's coming. It's an easy one to remember there to the Jewish people. Just look for the one with the uh, Jewish name on it. King James version. That's the New Testament that you want. Don't go for the Vatican ones like the NIV or the ESV or the NASV or whatever else. New King James version is a corrupt one as well. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 36. Go next to Ezekiel chapter 36. I'll read you another one here about the Jewish people being brought back in unbelief. So the, all the replacement theology nuts. Um, it doesn't work. The Jews don't come back in belief. You can't say, well, because they reject Jesus, then they couldn't be God's nation. Uh, you don't know your Bible too well. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 16. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. They, their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them, These are the people of the, of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land." But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God. 
when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of the, all countries and will bring you into your own land. There's physical land connected to the nation of Israel. You cannot deny that. Nobody out there that wants to say, oh, replacement theology, oh, the real Jews and all this stuff. You can't deny the fact that there is physical land right there. Ezekiel 36, 24, spoken about in the end times. There's physical land where the Jews are supposed to go. How are you going to make that applicable to you if you're a white man from Europe of the descendants of Japheth or if you're a black man of the descendants of Ham? How in the world can you apply that to yourself? Unless you do the little Catholic thing, just spiritualize it. Well, see, technically, spiritually, I, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't handle the text because you're a fool. And I have cause to call you a fool. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Just like over in Jeremiah 30. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God, be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Oh, see, when it says house of Israel, that's actually the Christian church now. Or, you know, I guess you don't say Christian. Whatever you'd say if you're one of these Hebrew Israelite replacement theology nut job Satanists out there. Oh, you Yeshua, Yahushua, and all this other stuff. If you can, if Hebrew's your native tongue, then say Yeshua. If it's not, then shut up. Romans chapter 11. Go to the New Testament now. Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. Oh, you know, God doesn't have anything to do anymore with those physical Jews and, and whatever else. Really? I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. There is a physical seed there that God's doing things with. And he prophesied that it's going to go back to their physical land physical seed in physical land they're back there prophecies being fulfilled oh no that's not that's just not part of the prophecy then why is it that the nation of israel being reborn in 1948 is setting off all the other prophecies yeah okay what's well, illuminati rothschild created and whatever else and god can't use the illuminati and the rothschilds to do his bidding God can't tell the Pope what to say. God controls everything. Unless you have some different God that's just some little idiot, little simpering, wimpy guy or whatever else that there's things happening down there. The Illuminati's acting. I can't stop them. Oh, <laughs> you have a weird God. God used Nebuchadnezzar. Called him my servant, Nebuchadnezzar. A lot more powerful than any Rothschild or whatever else of today. Give me a break. Verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time there also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. I can tell you right now there are Jews over there in Israel, that would be open to hearing about Jesus Christ. And they're looking for their Messiah. A lot of the Jews are secular, they're atheists, they're socialists, they're communists, they're wicked, wicked people slated for destruction. But I will, pro I will promise you, excuse me, there are Jews over there right now that are ready for the gospel when it's brought to them. 
And there are a lot of Jews, too, that will accept the truth when they see the book of Revelation coming to pass. The revelation of Jesus Christ. But you need Jesus revealed to you if you're saved and born again right now? How does that make any sense? It doesn't. Quit saying little Hebrew words there, white people and black people and whoever else you are if you're not Jewish. Revelation chapter, or excuse me, Romans chapter 11, jump down to verse 25. Now Paul writing to save brethren. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. In part. They're not all lost. There's some of them that do see the truth. Jesus is revealed to them through the gospel, and they accept him as their savior. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Sakes, excuse me, Father's. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's what it's talking about there. There's a purpose for the Jewish people. And to somehow get things all mixed up. I mean, these Hebrew Israelite people are just nuts in the head. I mean, just read the book of Galatians. It's the most simple thing. Go through the book of Galatians. You're not justified by the works of the law. It's, you know, there shall no flesh be justified, the Bible says in Galatians. And then, of course, what they'll do is they'll say, well, I reject Paul and I go with Jesus and everything else. And But then you get messed up with Jesus too, some of the stuff that he said, you know, I mean, Jesus, oh, you can be justified by law. Then why in the world did he die on the cross? That was a rather dumb thing of him to do. If you could just be justified by the law. And it, you know, the other thing that amazes me about all these Hebrew Israelite nuts, these white people that come out and they're saying about, you know, Yeshua and Yahawashi and all this other stuff. You know what amazes me? They can't even control their tongue. Some of the most foul mouthed people, just disgusting, sick people. Same thing with the blacks out there that do it. The black Hebrew Israelites, just foul mouth, just cussing people out, angry, bitter. But they're the real Jews. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we'll, we'll be getting to you here in just a few minutes. Second Timothy chapter two. It's funny that uh, Paul rebuked Peter in uh, the book of Galatians, because as a Jew, he was trying to act, make Gentiles act like Jews. And that was, re that was something that was a sin. You're not supposed to do that. But now you're supposed to be a Gentile and go around saying and pretending that you're Jewish and whatever else and rejecting this most powerful book that's ever showed up on this earth. Documented, I can prove that. The King James Bible, the most published book ever in history. The book that brought independence and freedom to many generations of Christians around the world, not just here in America. This blessed book, this great book. Oh, but you can't read it and say it exactly. You have to correct it by changing English name of Jesus Christ to Yeshua HaMashiach and all this stuff. <laughs> no time for you. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And you get into that stuff, you will get messed up too, by the way. Uh, we'll talk more about that too. Um, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, the Jews in other words, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Who was going after Paul all the time? It was the Jews of his day. The Jesus Christ rejecting Jews of Paul's day. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies. Remember that. But as touching the election, they're blessed for the Father's sakes. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. There's a blessing there, a spiritual blessing that's not going to go away. Verse 10, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes. The Calvinists come along and say, well, that's the saved you know, people, Jew or Gentile, that's saved. It's not what it's saying. Keep reading. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Now, if it was Calvinistic election, um, why would it say that they may also obtain salvation? It doesn't make any sense. Paul is writing about the Jewish people. That's what he's writing. He endures all things for the elect's sake. 
There's an election there, a special calling upon those Jewish people. They have a special future that's written out in the scriptures. The physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that are in the physical land of Israel. Brought back in the end times in unbelief. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 through 35. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth hmm, um, mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect hmm, from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, till all these things be fulfilled. Fulfilled in 1948. The fig tree, compared to the Old Testament. It's Israel. You say, oh no, it's Gentiles that use the word Yeshua. No, it's Israel. <laughs> Physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Fig tree. I mean, oh, we're in the end times. You can plainly see the book of, you know, in the Pauline epistles, there's a, you know, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. All these things about the end times are all coming to pass. The words of Jesus Christ, the beginning of sorrows, in, early in, earlier in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, they're all coming to pass. Okay? The Jews over in Israel are not the real physical seed of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're, they're frauds. They're imposters. They're Khazarians. <laughs> you know? Okay, then why did all the other prophecies, why are they all coming to pass? You mean God would let people come back to the land and reestablish the nation of Israel and have Hebrew as the language over there? And God can just let that happen? And they're actually just fakes and frauds? Are you really that stupid? <laughs> or are you just wicked and trying to take promises away from God's chosen people? You say, uh, well, we should be jealous, though, if these people are God's chosen people. Why would I be jealous of that? I'm going to be presented someday as a chaste virgin to Jesus Christ, the bride of Christ. I'm part of his body. Promises given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Are you kidding? I have something better than that. Bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. My Lord Jesus Christ. The name above all names. Written about in my King James Bible that my ancestors founded America with. My white Anglo-Saxon Protestant ancestors. Power in the name of Jesus. Show me when the, the name Yeshua made, meant anything. Did anything for any nation. Hebrew people? Say Yeshua. Absolutely. But not a bunch of white people or black people going around saying Yeshua thinking it gives them power. That's what this rebuke is for. Matthew chapter 25. Verse uh, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, I'll be in that number, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on, his, on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. It's talking to the Jews. 
primarily. I think there, there might be some Gentiles that get in as well into that time period there. But it's those who endure to the end that get saved at that point in time. And by the way, there's no grace through faith. That entire thing. Come on into the kingdom here. You made it in. Why are, are you saved by grace through faith? No, it's all works at that point in time. Towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm, interesting. A little hard for the uh, non-dispensational uh, one gospel from Genesis to Revelation. You know, funny bunnies. Verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Hmm. Judges them solely on their works at that point in time. And uh, most of these posty, toasty, Hebrew Israelite types of people, they won't make it anywhere close to being through the whole time of Jacob's trouble. There's no way. Um, they're going to be taking the mark and whatever else. Well, I, I had to provide for my family, but I'm a special chosen, you know, whatever, elected, you know, special thing. Yeah, you aren't going to make it. But what does God think about fake Jews? God has a prom or a a plan, we'll say, for the real Jews. But what does God think about the fake ones? Let me show you. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. All right. Beginning in verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's you, little Hebrew Israelite. You bunch of devils out there. You think you have some special inroad with God? Oh, you have a special inroad that's going to lead you right to hell. And if you're newly saved and you're falling for some of this stuff, and you know, oh, I've been watching these videos and they say it should be Yeshua. And, and the J word, the J, there wasn't until recently. And actually, Jesus, Zeus, and I, you know, the... What's the stupid movie that the Zeitgeist movement or whatever, you know, and that came out and, and oh, I, oh man, you know, and the, and the real, the Jews that are in Israel, they read the Talmud and, and the Zohar and the Kabbalah and, and yeah, they're supposed to be brought back in unbelief. You're not supposed to act like a Jew. And if you do, it's blasphemy. How dare you do that? You see... God created everybody to have their own racial identity, ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, your kindred distinctions. We're supposed to be separated. It doesn't mean racism. It doesn't mean some kind of thing of I'm better than you. I'm different than you. That's the Bible system. I can look at African culture, the Maasai people, and I can say, that is beautiful. What a beautiful culture that these people have. Well, then I should start dressing like that? No. No. I'm a Northern European. That's my culture. That's my people. Look at Japan and, and the beautiful culture that they have. Wonderful, beautiful. South America. Down there in the mountains and things in Peru and whatever. Beautiful. It's wonderful. That's their culture. That's what God wants. God doesn't want this amalgamated, everybody's supposed to dress the same and look the same and whatever else. And you're white, but you just go around acting like you're Hebrew. Like you're Jewish or something. You're guilty of blasphemy. Revelation chapter 3, beginning in verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works, and behold, I, excuse me, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. The Lord speaking here, commending uh, this group here, this church, 
Look at verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Well, if you have two groups there and the one is, I am loved of God and he forces somebody else to come and worship before my feet. What does that mean? That he loves both groups? The synagogue of Satan, I love them and I love you over here. Uh, no, no. He hates the synagogue of Satan. The opposite of love is hate. All right? You better be really careful. You better know what your ancestry is. You better say, hey, you know what? Yeah, my ancestors come from the UK and from, from Germany and from France and from wherever. I'm not a Jew. I'm not Jewish. I'm not a physical Jew. And if you're physically Jewish, you better get back to Israel before God has to push you back with the new alt-right Nazi fascist movement that's coming here to America. You can't see it right now because you see they're still provoking the white people, getting them drummed up ready for war, ready to go out and kill with all this liberal nonsense and everything else. You better get out of here. But if you're white or if you're black, if I have a black African out there watching me, you better not say Yeshua. You better, if you speak English, you better be using the word Jesus, like your King James Bible says to use. All right? Be real careful. And Yahweh, Yahweh, and everything else. Show me Yahweh in this book. It's Jehovah. Yahweh is the name of a false god. If you get into all the studies and all the other stuff there and whatever, but again, if it's not in the book, you shouldn't be saying it. Very simple. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I'll show you another good one here to use on these uh, nutty, nut job uh, Hebrew Israelites. I am of the Jews. I am of the tribe of such and such. It's kind of funny. You don't look Jewish. Blue hair. Or excuse me, well, some of them probably have blue hair. Blue eyes and blonde hair. Oh, I'm I'm a Jew. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you're not Shemitic. Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 and 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. Male, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You say, well, right there, see, we're Abraham's seed. We're supposed to be acting Jewish. Show me that in the text. Christ, seed, if you be Christ, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. We're not one in Yeshua. Just read the King James Bible. I mean, there, there are people that are so gullible and so dumb nowadays. Somebody can come out and they can say, hey, that black Bible that you're holding in your hand? They say, yeah. And these new Christians, yes. They say, did you know it's not really black leather? It's not. It's actually white. Wow, I never knew that. I'll have to go around and call black white. That's amazing. It's that, it's that bad. You should be saying Yeshua. My Bible says Christ Jesus. You trying to get me to change the word of God? Act like I'm a Jew so I can enter your synagogue of Satan? Um, and by the way, what our text is saying there in Galatians 3.28... Um, if you are Jewish and you're saved, you don't need to be going around saying, I'm a Jewish Christian. I'm I'm Jewish. Oh, I'm saved. I'm born again. Praise the Lord. I, Jesus Christ is my Savior. And you speak in Hebrew, you say, uh, Yeshua. But you don't have some special identity or something like that, like all these Hebrew roots cult people try to get you into. Mark chapter 8. We'll end here. Please don't fall for this stuff. If you're newly saved or if you've been into this thing, you need to repent of it quickly because God hates this thing of people trying to say that they're Jews and they're not. And here's what you're guilty of. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 
For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words... In this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Are you ashamed of this King James Bible? I'm not. I put scriptures from this blessed book on my vehicle. And you think I'm ever going to change it? Well, God, you know, you didn't really know what you were doing when you said Jesus. You should have said, you know, Yeshua to us, us English speakers and whatever else and that's not ever going to happen. I'm not ashamed of the words of Jesus Christ. Every, every single Hebrew roots nut out there, every single one of them that, that crosses the line and says, my ethnicity now doesn't matter. I'm going to identify as a Jew. You know, this modern satanic movement of I identify as this or I identify as that. It's satanic. You're rejecting how God made you. And if you identify as a Jew when you're not one, when you have no connection to the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, I'm one-tenth you know, Jewish on my grandmother's cousin's side or something. Oh, shut up. Shut up. You know, uh, Shut up. I get so sick and tired of that. Well, I can trace back some lineage, and, and I think, Brian, you have some because you look somewhat Jewish. I don't have any Jewish blood in me. I don't have any. My ancestors are from Germany and Switzerland. I'm not ashamed of the Jewish people or whatever else, but uh, like I showed, I've been showing it right there. Ancestry.com. 14 generations back. Germany and Switzerland. Germany and Switzerland. My sister went and she got DNA testing done and whatever else. Not a drop of English, or not a drop of, uh, excuse me, not a drop of Jewish blood. None. You think I'm going to start going around acting like I'm a Jew? Why in the world would I do that? It's not how God made me. And change this blessed book. Start preaching in a way that I can use the little magic terms, you know, and I'll start to use as many Hebrew words as I can and whatever. If you're one of these Hebrew roots people, you need to get saved. You really do. All right? I doubt the salvation of you. Just like Paul did with the Galatians. They're trying to be justified by the works of the law. You can't be justified by the works of the law. You think you can be Torah observant? You know, I'm going to I'm going to keep the Ten Commandments and whatever else. And th you're a fool. Jesus came to fulfill the law. You don't need to keep the Ten Commandments anymore in terms of keeping them to maintain your salvation to die in a state of grace or something. That's Catholic, right? That's what the Catholics do: dying in a state of grace and whatever. They don't believe in keeping the Ten Commandments. You know, are you kidding me? But you have to do the Eucharist thing and all that stuff to maintain your salvation and then die in a state of grace well it's just a different twisting of that for the jews what did the jews have as a way to sacrifice for their sins today to atone for their sins well i'll just try to be a good person and try to you know kind of keep the law as best as i can can't really do that but we'll just we'll pretend that we're keeping the law and and um hopefully we'll you know when the resurrection happens maybe i'll get another chance or some kind of a you know, if I have a son, he can pray me out of the, you know, grave and point me towards, you know, Israel when I die or something so I can maybe get zipped over. The... What a bunch of foolish nonsense. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin, sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow and he wrote about it. You don't need to change the word of God. Don't be ashamed of the book. Well, all my friends are saying Yeshua, and if I come in and say Jesus, they'll rebuke me for it. Then you need to get some new friends. That's going to be it for this study. Don't waste my time anymore out there, you people that say, uh, well, I think that, you know, if you, when you grow up, Brian, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> when you grow up, you'll maybe understand the truth about the the nation of Israel, the so-called nation of Israel over there that's a Rothschild creation and, and uh, all this stuff and everything. And I've already studied it. I studied it years ago. I've been through the whole thing already. I'm not trying to be prideful. I have the anti-Semitic stuff out there, okay? The protocols of the learned elders of Zion and all the 
Kabbalah and all this stuff and their satanic evil. What? That's kind of the point. That's what the Bible teaches. They're brought back in unbelief. They have idols. They're doing all kinds of bad stuff. The Lord has to pour out his judgment upon them. I'm not looking for God's judgment in my future. My judgment happened at the cross. He became sin who knew no sin. <laughs> so you, you want to go out and earn your salvation? Hey, have at it. Whatever. Um, go ahead. But uh, don't take any of these Hebrew Israelite people serious. Uh, if you're looking at a white man and he's up there and he's telling you Yeshua and all this, I'm, you need to you know, read the Torah and all that, turn them off. Just wa don't watch them, okay? Well, I need to be open-minded and, and I just really... Did. The Lord called me into ministry a long time ago. I went through many years of studying and researching and preaching in pulpits and preaching on the street and going out door to door and everything else. Now, if you don't want to listen to a man that has experience, then go experience it yourself. Go out and wonder out there into the world and oh, I'm going to go join up with the you know the real true Jews and and we'll just go out and we can use profanity and we can get tattooed and we can be wicked and everything else but it's okay because we're Torah observant you know um and it's funny too because a lot of these guys the, the ones that are all the I'm a I'm a Jew you know I pray in you in the name of Yeshua and all this stuff I'm a Shia and they have tattoos and they show them off and yet Leviticus the Old Testament says about you're not to print any marks upon you. Kind of a weird situation, isn't it? Um, but if you want to go out and wander out into that, and all of a sudden you're a pork abstaining, um, Sabbath keeping, uh, funny bunny that's whatever, go ahead. Go experience it for yourself. Uh, but if you want to listen to a voice of experience, a man who's been through that, studying that whole thing and arguing back and forth with these people, then please take my advice. Get away from them. The King James Bible is your standard. And if you look in there and you say, I don't see the word Yeshua. Huh. Hamashiach. Oh, oh, that's the Hebrew word. Okay, well, my, I have an English Bible. I'm not going to be ashamed of my English Bible, the greatest Bible that's ever showed up on the earth. No book has ever been able to match the spiritual fruit that this King James Bible produced. And if you want to amount to anything as a Christian, you will read and believe the King James Bible. You know why? Because I've tried the others. They don't work. The others come from the Vatican. You want some spiritual power? Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ or of his word. Simple. 